This is the Yamaha YCL631 Professional E-flat alto clarinet. This is Yamaha's current model of alto clarinet and is sold alongside the professional model bass and B-flat clarinets. So before I give you my opinion of this instrument, first I just want to go down some of the features that uh, this instrument has. First of all, like most professional instruments, this is made of solid grenadilla wood. It also has silver plated keys like you tend to find on more modern professional instruments. Now that's pretty true of most modern day professional alto clarinets, however this instrument has some special features that make it different from your average buffet or selmer. The first and most important feature, in my opinion, is the fully automatic double register mechanism this instrument has. So essentially what a uh, fully automatic double register mechanism is, is when you're playing in the upper clarion register, most instruments, at least B-flats and student altos, tend to have only one register vent, and it would be placed midway in between these two vents on this instrument. And for most instruments, that's enough, but it does create a few problems. First of all, it creates problems with intonation, especially in the clarion B and the high C. And um, the most common problem it creates is that it'll make those notes extremely sharp. And in addition to that, it'll also make those notes quite hard to play. So when you're playing through the upper register, it'll start out stuffy and hard to play. It'll get a little bit easier as you get to the mid clarion. And when you start to get to the upper notes, it gets a little bit harder. And that's pretty true for most other alto clarinets. However, this instrument solves that problem in a pretty um, good way, in my opinion. What it does is it has, instead of one vent, it has two vents this upper vent for the notes E through C, and this lower vent for the notes uh, D sharp through B. And by separating those two uh, sections of the clarion and using one vent for each, it'll actually um, it not only fix the intonation problems that you sometimes see with other instruments, but it'll also make the clarion much easier to play. And this is why I love to see this feature on, not on especially bass clarinets, but the fact that you can see, you see it on an alto clarinet is very unique, and I think it's a very good feature of this instrument. Now, in addition to that, it also has a offset E low A tone hole. And essentially, um, on a lot of professional alto clarinets, the, uh, this tone hole right here will be located here. Now, you can see that it's about a little bit higher up if it, was, if it were to be located there. And what that causes is that the um, that note will become a bit stuffy and maybe the intonation can suffer between the registers. However, by relocating the tone hole to the side of the instrument, it is going to be a little bit more in tune throughout the registers and it'll also be a little bit less stuffy and more even compared to the notes around it because this tone hole is now the acoustically correct size. And I think that's a nice feature to see. It's actually a feature you find on your average Bundy alto clarinet but for some reason it doesn't show up on a lot of professional models, except it's here, so that's a good thing to see. Other than that, there aren't really too many other features that set this apart from other instruments. One thing I don't like about this instrument is it doesn't have an A flat E flat key, which isn't the end of the world, but for example, let's say if you were trying to play a slur from low E flat to A flat, you really couldn't do that without lifting your finger and you really can't play a smooth slur between those two notes. Mm -hmm. Now if you had the side A flat E flat key, that slur would be no problem. But in this instrument you have to do a little bit of maneuvering with your fingers to get it to sound right. And that's, um, that's kind of disappointing because it's a pretty common feature on a lot of professional B flat and bass clarinets these days. So it's disappointing not to see it on this instrument. However, I think that it's still a very good instrument despite this. And it's still worth a look at. Now, one thing, other, another thing I don't like about this instrument is the size of the altissimo vent. Now, because of this, it's very hard to play in the altissimo register, as I'll demonstrate. So, every time I try to play in the altissimo, it hesitates a bit, and it tends not to speak as clearly as the notes of the upper clarion. And this could easily be solved by drilling out this hole a little bit. However, it seems like something they should have done at the factory. Let's see, other features of this instrument that I like, it has quite a few adjustment screws. There's some adjustment screws on the uh, lower touch pieces 
and on the uh, first finger touch piece between the this pad here and the touch piece itself. And that's nice for adjusting instruments should it ever go out of regulation, which does happen in alto clarinets, any clarinet really, but especially alto clarinets because they tend to be a little bit more complicated. Um, other than that, pretty much your standard alto clarinet. It's a very nice, well built instrument. Feels good under the fingers. Keys feel nice and even. Spring pressures feel good. Just an overall pretty decent instrument. Now, to give you a quick idea of what this instrument sounds like, I'm just going to play a chromatic scale from the low E flat all the way to high C. <laughs> one other feature that this instrument has. However, I didn't want to talk about it too much because it really isn't something that's usable in any real sense. So some instruments have what's known as a forked E flat, B flat fingering. Essentially what that means is instead of playing B, E flat in the lower register, B flat in the upper register like this with the side trill key or like this with the one-on-one -on -one fingering, you can actually play it like this with your first um, finger on your left hand and your third finger and this is pretty common on instruments like full volume instruments and some older clarinets however it's not really seen too often on alto clarinets however this instrument does kind of have this feature you can see that when I close the uh, the third uh, finger key it actually closes the uh, the E flat pad cup and in theory this should produce a E flat or B flat but so I'll demonstrate there are some problems with this. So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the uh, the B flat, or the, I'm sorry, the E flat with the uh, traditional fingering, and then I'm going to try and play this fork finger. <laughs> so you can hear it has some pretty bad intonation problems. Um, let's try playing the upper register just to see what happens. Again, very, very flat, and um, it's not like this feature was just an accident, because there is actually an adjustment screw here, so it's designed so that when you close this key, it's going to close this uh, pad cup, so clearly some thought was put into the design, and somehow along the way, somebody realized this feature didn't work, and then never removed the keyboard to make it work, so a very unusual feature. The only thing I can think of is maybe this is, it's like this so that, um, let's say this screw was loose and out of adjustment, so that this pad cup could close this, uh, this other pad cup so that as you're playing lower the instrument there wouldn't be a leak. That's the only reason I could think of it to be there. It seems like they intended for it to have a, uh, the forked fingering and then just kind of gave up halfway on it. So that's a really weird thing to see on this instrument. So thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. Also, please feel free to like and subscribe. I tend to post uh, reviews and project videos. Alright, thanks for watching.